All right, Courtney, uh, Power is about to head into its third season. Uh, you're premiering just a few days from now. Uh, you guys must be doing something right for this show to have lasted this long. Uh, why do you think, where do you think the appeal for it comes from? Why does it struck a chord with audiences? Well, I hope it's because of how um, universal the themes are that we have uh, tried to you know, construct around Ghost and his journey. It's the American dream, obviously. It's all about that. It's all about his, um, his rags to riches story. Uh, and I think it's also about the fact that people want to see if you can change your future. If you can, you know, your past, obviously you can't change, but can you redirect your, um, your path? So I think there's some universal stuff. I mean, obviously, love triangles. People love those. And I think it's also our style. The style of the show is this high-velocity, um, high-impact style. And I think people go really crazy for that. Um, that was something that I picked to do on purpose. Stars uh, at that point had done Spartacus, and then they had this regime and sort of moved to a, um, a really lovely... Uh, boss kind of magic city slower paced um model and i wasn't interested in doing anything slower paced <laughs> so i really kind of pushed that <laughs> so here we are. yeah uh we'll talk about how you got involved with it you're a tv veteran you've done uh good wife bernie mac show lots of other stuff um talk about uh, 50 cent came to you with the idea and you further developed is that right it's uh, not exactly. Um, I was developing something on my own that okay. was in, a, in a, like a similar area. And 50 and Mark Canton had an idea that they wanted to work on. Uh, and then CAA brought us all together and the amalgamation of the two became power. I see. Okay. Um, so talk about how the show has developed then over these uh, last two seasons and then developed into the third season. Um, well, the show started, um, I think one of the things that we tried to do uh, was really focus on the aspect of the storytelling that you could only tell um, in a world. So the first season is really about the affair. It's about Ghost and Angela and uh, them having that affair before either one of them knows the other person's true occupation. Because once those occupations were known, you were never gonna be able to tell an affair story. It wasn't gonna be about that anymore. So we were very slow to, to, to do that. Um, the first season is really about those core characters. Um, we didn't really introduce anyone new. It was really, um, you know, Ghost, Tasha, Angela, Tommy, Sean, and then Kanan. Um, and all the Canaan stuff we shot in two days at a prison in Nassau County. So even though it was in several episodes, it was actually this crazy thing where we had directors, we had the appropriate director for each episode come in. So we literally had like this director and then this director and this director, George Tillman came in and directed, and then John David Coles came in. And then, you know, we were just running around like because we had very limited availability from 50. The second season with Canaan getting out, you know, uh, 50 became a series regular. <laughs> We started to expand the world, and then we really got to uh, expand with the character Dre, played by Rotimi Akinosho. Uh, we got to spend more time with Holly, uh, mm -hmm. played by the amazing Lucy Walters. And uh, we really started to dig deeper into uh, Ghost's relationships with Lobos and his relationships uh, you know, with Kanan, obviously. So um, I think that was you know, one and two. And then three pushes it now to the next level because uh, ostensibly Ghost has gotten everything that he wanted. Ha ha. <laughs> the theme for season three is be careful what you wish for. And uh, everybody's gotten what they wished for. Tasha's be careful what you wish for starts actually in episode nine of season two because uh, Sean commits to running away with her. Well, that doesn't work out. So then, but you have Ghost, who has already, who's out at the top of season three. He is um, out of the game. He's James St. Patrick. He's with Angela. You've got Tommy, who's now a kingpin in his own right. He's the distro, no longer working under Ghost. Um, and you have Tasha, and you have Angela. Angela got, uh, got Jamie. You know, he committed to not being Ghost for her. And you know, when you try to change a man, that always works out. Always. 
uh, men change easily for women, they commit to it, and they stay that way. So, fantastic. It's going to work out great. Everyone's going to get what they want, and every episode of season three is just people holding hands and uh, and kissing and scaring <laughs> them. I'm well, like... I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> um, you know, one of the great things about this show, I think, is that uh, it has this built-in tension to it. Um, you know, that like a lot of great shows like The Sopranos or Breaking Bad or uh, have where the lead character is in a situation week by week where he can get caught, he can get killed, he can get like, you know, he can get tangled up further in this, uh, in this web uh, so talk about writing that tension into uh, the show. You know what I mean? Like keeping that tension high episode to episode. Well, what's great about my writer's room and where I really have to give them credit is that we always talk about ghost and the no good, terrible, horrible, very bad season. <laughs> so we always talk about what are the bad things that can happen. And uh, Raphael Jackson Jr. and Damian Mastodon, who are my supervising producers uh, this coming year, but... Uh, on season three uh, were producers. They are really good at writing those episodes. They usually write the fifth episode of the year where everything bad happens all at once in one day. Um, we really like those episodes and we really, and th those are kind of the model for the answer to your question, which is how do we keep that tension on Ghost? Well, Ghost is uh, really on a high wire act, right? Because he's lying all the time, which creates jeopardy. Lies always create jeopardy. He's a criminal, which creates jeopardy. He's having an affair, which creates jeopardy. And what's nice is that his constant need to lie and perform criminal acts keeps him in jeopardy. So I don't have to uh, create anything. I just have to let the, the avalanche of storytelling play. I always think of great storytelling as like lining up one of those elaborate domino things that you would see that would be on Madison Square Garden, you know, when we were kids. Mm -hmm. Like that whole idea that like it sh everything should fall. Um, Gary Lennon, who's one of my EPs, or he is my writing EP, um, my, my number two on the show, says things should be surprising yet inevitable. You know, mm -hmm. so for an example, uh, Sean's death is inevitable. He's sleeping with Tasha, right? He has disobeyed his biological father. He has come to kill um, his, you know, surrogate father in Ghost at the end of 209. It's pretty inevitable that something bad's going to happen to him, but we hope it's surprising the way that it happens. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, it, it certainly is, you know. Um, so then, uh, you know, moving into season three, uh, I know you said everything is going to be all well and good, but I know you've got more surprises up your sleeve than that. <laughs> I'm lying. I'm lying. <laughs> um, and actually, you know, when I just talked to uh, Fiddy, and he said that when you guys talked about the show initially, you had like, he said that you could see all the way to season five with this, you know. Well, I think, as you know, the traditional version of pitching a TV show requires you to go into your pitch with five years. You know, you should know uh -huh. through, through season five. So that's actually what I did. Um, I didn't pitch stars all of it because then they could just write it without me. But I did <laughs> tell them that I have it and that, you know, I thought through. That doesn't mean that the show will only be five years long. It just means that that's the best version of giving your, um, your network a, a level of comfort with the fact that the show can continue. Um, but there are certain things that I knew we were going to do that we already did the very end of season three um, was actually something that I always wanted to do um, in terms of season three. I'm just going to decline that, I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, that is, I guess, what, um, what I would say in terms of how we structured and went forward uh, yeah. with all of that. Now, you received an Emmy nomination uh, as one of the producers on The Good Wife a few years ago, and we're back in the middle of Emmy season. So uh, talk about what that kind of recognition meant for you and for the whole team. Wow. Well, um, it was. I went to the Emmys twice as a nominee once. The first time I went to the Emmys, I was pregnant with my daughter. So oh, I was yeah. enormous. And um, we had nosebleed seats. And that was the year that Archie Punjabi won. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I believe uh, Juliana lost to Kira Sedgwick that year, um, but then I think she won maybe the next year. I think um, that's right, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, it was an interesting thing. I will tell you a little story, quick story, which mm -hmm. is 
were all in, we were all sitting in our seats and they came right before they announced the category for best dramatic series, they came and they asked us how to pronounce our uh, last names. And Ooh. they went through and they asked us all of those questions. Uh, all of us said how to pronounce our names. And at the time, you know, I was uh, married and my last name was Agbo, which is not easy for people to pronounce. So they came and they asked us, and we were all looking at each other like, does that mean us? Does that mean us? And we were all <laughs> so excited because we'd worked so hard. And then they said, and it goes to Mad Men. I think it was Mad Men. It was either Mad Men or Breaking Bad. I mean, it was always either Mad Men or Breaking Bad, I don't remember. But mm -hmm. we were all so disappointed. And I remember that feeling. Um, you know, I remember that feeling really distinctly. That said, it's an honor to be nominated. It's a really big deal. And I think that it is something that I'll always be proud of because I worked really hard at The Good Wife. I worked really hard. We all worked really hard to make that show what it, what it, what it was and what it is, or what it ended up being, I guess. Mm -hmm. So with this show, you guys have got something like what six point nine million viewers is what I, the number I keep hearing, and it's steadily growing. You know, so what does the approval of the audience mean for you guys? Well, I just want people to enjoy it. I'm trying to make a, an, an entertainment um, as much as I am. Tr I'm trying to make something that is fun for people and maybe says something political occasionally and sometimes it says something about spirituality and sometimes says something about a good and evil. I'm trying to pack all those things into something that is really fun and sexy and violent and all those great things. So um, for me, the audience enjoying it is the best. I mean, it's the best because you can't plan for that. You can't make that happen. You don't do that by yourself. You do the, your best. You put it out there. I always say we leave everything on the field. And so if we get a win, that's great. Um, I really hope that the audience loves it this season. I think we pushed the genre. I don't want to say push the genre. That sounds a little big. We pushed the show. We pushed the series per episode and tried to force it to do things it hadn't done before. Um, I really want people to, I want to push their expectations. You know, I really want to push their expectations. And I want them to feel like they don't exactly know what's coming next uh, with power. I think they should be surprised, always. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations on the show. And it was a real pleasure talking with you. Thank you. It was really nice to talk to you, too. I'm sorry we froze there for a second. But, oh, that's uh, fine. It happens all the time. <laughs> nice talking. Uh, Take care. I always love talking to journalists. That's like my favorite thing. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I love talking to people like yourself. It's it's a joy for me. So. All right. Well, cool. Love your Wolf and Wall Street poster. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I love it too. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll right. we'll send you a, a power poster so that you can. Uh, oh yeah. Please uh, do. Yeah, I would love one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, take care. Bye. Have, have a great day. Bye.